The 10 days that shook the world. The Russian revolutions. Mother Russia, at the eve of World War I, is a strong woman. She is plentiful in citizens, and even though she is not as advanced in military technology and infrastructures as the surrounding countries, she bears a great bosom of bountiful strength and stands as tall as a great oak until her ally Serbia is faced with conflict with Austria-Hungary. Russia remains loyal to Serbia and agrees to go to war, but is unprepared for the battle with Germany. In order to fully understand the Russian revolutions, we must first comprehend the chain of reactions that led to the series of rebellions and revolts. By 1917, most of Russia had lost its faith in the leadership ability of Tsar Nicholas II. In a war with Japan, Russia suffered humiliating defeats and on the day of Bloody Sunday, a massacre on the working class of Russia, the people had no tolerance for the Tsar whatsoever. The Russian economy remained backwards, and Nicholas repeatedly dissolved the Duma for opposing his will, which until then was the Russian parliament, established after the 1905 revolution. However, the immediate cause of the February Revolution, the first phase of the Russian Revolution in 1917, was Russia's disastrous involvement in World War I. Military imperialism in Russia was no match for the industrialized Germany. The Russians' casualties was greater than those of any nation in any previous war. Meanwhile, the economy was hopelessly disturbed by the costly war efforts, and moderates joined Russians' radical elements in calling to overthrow the Tsar. With all the tension among the people of Russia and the Tsar, there was yet another problem to be dealt with. As Serbia countered conflict with Austria-Hungary, Russia, an ally of Serbia, would be dragged into it at, as well. This led, among with other factors, the beginning of World War I. Tsar wasn't like among his people. Tsar handled most of the political and military situation poorly due to his lack of leadership. As a result, before boarding the train in 1917, he was placed on house arrest with his whole family to some mountains for quite some time. Later, Tsar and his whole family was executed in 1918 by the Bolsheviks. The Russian Revolution was composed of two revolutions. The February Revolution was the more minor. It forced the Tsar to step down. The later October Revolution was a convergence of multiple movements, including the seizure of power by a minority of whom differed radically in their practices, ideology, and organization from all other participants in the revolutionary process, and a vast social revolution, the social revolution of which included a deeply rooted movement of rebellion among the peasantry that was marked by a hatred of landowners and a profound distrust of anything outside of the country. The loss of Russia's western provinces after the 1915 invasion by Austro-Hungarian forces deprived Russia of access to manufactured goods. The conversion of Russian factories to the war effort squeezed production for domestic consumption. In a few months, shortages were common, and inflation and poverty were rampant. An abrupt end to agricultural loans and land reallocation, a large-scale mobilization of men into the army, the requisitioning of livestock and grain, the scarcity of manufactured goods, and the destruction of exchange between town and country over the course of three years of war strengthened the peasant belief that the state was an alien and hostile force. Nicholas II took personal command of the armies, isolated in his private train at headquarters. The empress, Nicholas's wife, collaborated with the Russian priest Rasputin to open the country to enemy invasion. After five days of workers' demonstrations and the mutiny of a few thousand men in the Petrograd garrison, the Tsarist regime fell. Three successive provincial governments ruled Russia from March to October 1917. Liberals strove to build Russia into a modern, capitalist government, who remained faithful to her allies and made up the majority of the first two. The Mensheviks made up the majority of the third. The Mensheviks were socialists who believed in following the law and were willing to compromise with the liberals. They wanted to bring Russia into a democracy, following the path laid out by the French Revolution. During the summer of 1917, the peasants became more organized in the revolts, setting up agricultural committees. From Maine June onward, 
they seized land and goods from the barons and redistributed them under the principle of how many mouths they were to feed. The Kulaks, landowning peasants, also lost their land in most cases. By the end of August, broken promises by the government to implement agrarian reforms due to the respect for legality resulted in mass assaults on manor houses. Thousands of houses were burned and hundreds of landowners were killed. The idea of Bolshevism then began to spread. The Bolsheviks, who were the more radical socialists, wanted to use force to nationalize land and put an end to the war at any terms, but due to bad communication, the message the peasants received from them were the words land and peace from army deserters. In October, the Bolsheviks staged a coup, seizing power with a few thousand soldiers and a few hundred militant Bolsheviks from factory committees. This became known as the October Revolution. They proceeded to legally approve the peasant seizing of land so that they could remain in control. The Bolsheviks began directing the people's anger towards scapegoats by saying that they were sabotaging the government. The Bolshevik leaders encouraged social revenge among the masses to direct anger from them at the so-called profiteers and speculators as businesses laid off tens of thousands of workers due to the demobilization after the war ended. Soon enough, peasants began seeing that their liberties were not safeguarded by the Bolsheviks and their goods were stolen. On September 5th, the government legalized practically unrestricted Soviet terror, also known as the Red Terror. Within two months, 10 to 15,000 people were killed, more than all the political executions of Tsarism over the course of the past almost 100 years. People were executed for as little as being suspicious of not supporting the regime, and the class genocide had begun. Martin Latsis, one of the first leaders of the Cheka, instructed his men, we don't make war against any people in particular. We are exterminating the bourgeois as a class. In your investigations, don't look for documents and pieces of evidence about what the defendant has done. The first question you should ask him is what class he comes from, what are his, what are his roots, his education, his training, and his occupation. Forced collectivization of the peasants' land and mass food production quotas, which would send many villages to starvation, resulted in the formation of peasant armies of tens of thousands of men. Bo the Bolshevik opposition failed to unite, however. The famed White Army, named for the uniform of the soldiers under the, under the stars, were the main organized Bolshevik opposition. Their belief that property rights should be restored to the owners failed to win them support among many of the peasant forces. The Bolsheviks, known as the Reds, and the Whites dueled until the end of 1920, when the White Army was finally defeated. During their battle, the peasant forces, known as the Greens, would revolt, sometimes aiding the Whites, and other times the Reds. After the end of the organized Bolshevik opposition, the Bolsheviks doubled down on food collection, often using pre-war statistics to base their demands. While the famine eventually lessened, the repression did not. The Soviet Union the Bolsheviks founded was ultimately responsible for the death of 20 million of their own people. While quitting World War I, Russia had to sign the Treaty of Breslovsk, which contained harsh terms such as giving up lands to other countries. The treaty was signed on March 3, 1918, a year after the Russian Revolution. Russia did compensate her loss through by forming the Soviet Union, which was an amalgamation of small countries in Europe and Central Asia. The Soviet Union, which was some sort of empire but a communist one, was ruled by Joseph Stalin. When, when Russia first backed down from World War I, Germany regained hope of winning the war. That hope was later destroyed and Germany lost. Nevertheless, the Allies wanted Russia back in the war. That's why they supported the Whites during the Civil War. The Allies did not aim to spend too much time trying to help Russia, though, because they believed they had more important things to take care of, such as forming the Treaty of Versailles. World War I enormously affected the revolution by adding to its causes. The addition was the lack of food and resources and the enormous death rates. All these problems contributed to the commencement of the Russian Revolution of 1917.